Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. Um. And. Anyone else here? Hello? DC? James? Uh, Paul? Paul around? Dom? Dom, you... Here? Gap? I'll even take Gap. Alex? A Alex? Alex, you have to be here somewhere, right? Alex? Alex? Oh no. I made my co-host disappear. Oh wait. I made my co-host disappear. Welcome to Nathan's Home Alone for Christmas Special, sponsored by the Sticky Bandits, now hiring. Hazard pay is not included. If you have references, that means you are on the grid and need not apply. The Sticky Bandits, not affiliated with the Wet Bandits, those guys were pretty dumb, right? We're definitely not the same people. Trust us. This is terrific. No one's around to tell me what to do. I can do anything I want. Woo! Delve Christmas special. All me. All the time. Woo! I got 15 pizzas on order. And I'm going to watch movies that are probably not even appropriate for adults. Because they have bad language in them. Yeah! Yeah! Deal with it. I'm going to take out my Hot Wheels and ride them all around the house. There's nothing you can do about it. Woo! First, I have to figure out where I put my Hot Wheels. I know that they're around here somewhere. Well, first of all, I find the Hot Wheels and possibly some matchboxes in there, too. Can't really remember. And then I roll them around all over the house and there's no one to tell me I can't. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Oh, oh, right. We got to do segments. Um, right. What, what are we going to do for segments? Let me think about this. Oh, 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 I have a great idea. Oh, I always wanted to do this. I, uh, a holiday gift guide. A funny holiday gift guide. Like Dave Barry used to do. My favorite humorist, don't at me. Every year, Dave Barry would do uh, a gift guide of the silly gifts that uh, seem almost impractical uh, to give anybody. It's not really a, a thing he does since he kind of stopped writing columns a while back. Uh, so, so we can pick it up, right? Uh, I'm sure that we can find stuff. Let's see. Uh, stupid, stupid Christmas gifts. Yeah, let's look, look this up. All right, so I was looking it up, and uh, if you just kind of look at some of the basic things under, you know, like uh, uh, silly gifts or stupid gifts or anything like that, uh, you do find a few really good ones, uh, like, a, like a coffee mug that has the entire script of Shrek on it. Why not? Um, a knapsack. Which is uh, literally just like a, a sack that you put over your head so that you can take a nap on a park bench. Uh, wherever you want to take a nap. I didn't think it was a particularly good idea to put uh, uh, bags over your head. I, I kind of thought that that was uh, frowned upon and uh, possibly a, a choking hazard. But, uh, hey, you're an adult, I guess. Uh, and then like something like a yodeling pickle. You hit the button and apparently it yodels. Those are fun. I gotta tell you, some of the best that I found were uh, from a, a gift list made by thingamagift.com. Thank you, by the way. Uh, I want to go over a few that they found because these are so good. I need to tell everybody about them. And we're just going to get the obvious one out of the way a portable urinal golf club. I, yeah, we gotta talk about that, you know. Uh, the Euro Club portable urinal uh, is, uh, is a great way for you to, to pee while you are on the links. Uh, and uh, it's got a hollowed out handle and like a, a privacy towel. Uh, so, you know, when you gotta go, you gotta go, right? Uh, and uh, I know a lot of people might be asking themselves right now, uh, Nathan... Aren't there usually, like, woods around on a golf course? Couldn't you just go in the woods or 
if you're near the clubhouse, there, there's probably public restrooms somewhere on the course. And I say, why bother when you have everything that you need uh, in the convenience of your golf cart? Now, some people may think that this is kind of a stupid thing, but at the same time, I can totally see my dad using this. So, it's actually kind of a useful useful thing. Apparently, it also even works as a golf club. If you wanted to use it as a golf club, I don't think I'd want to, without a whole lot of sanitary wipes around. But, you know what? Options there. By the way, you can buy this on Amazon. It was seen on Shark Tank. Yeah, this is apparently something on Shark Tank. Congratulations. Frequently bought together with this on Amazon uh, includes the uh, MySack golf ball storage bag. I'm just going to leave that to your imagination. It's probably better if I don't go into too much detail about that. But uh, hey, you know, for the golfer in your life who also needs to pee frequently, this is a perfect gift for them. And I know what you're saying. This seems like a very male-centric gift. What about the ladies? Don't, don't women also golf good news for you. There's also a wonderful gift you can give called the Shiwi Pea Funnel. And if you just mesh the two together, now it's unisex. How can you not love this gift? It's perfect for everybody, theoretically. All right, but enough toilet humor. Let's, uh, let's actually get onto something a little bit more, you know, sophisticated. I'm talking, of course, of the rubber chicken purse. The hen bag handbag is uh, basically the uh, the bag that you can carry with you that looks like a, a rubber chicken because people have been demanding it for too long. For thirty dollars on Amazon, you can buy uh, this lovely, lovely purse made from a textured rubber with nylon handles and bottom. If you don't have a lot of stuff to store in the purse, maybe you're going out for fried chicken. And want something ironic to put it in. Congratulations. This is the solution. Uh, frequently bought together with chicken legs knee-high novelty socks. Because apparently chicken is very in fashion now. Did not know that. I haven't exactly caught up with the Paris fashion show. Is this like an Yves Saint Laurent thing? I don't know. I will never understand. But hey, it's available. Ooh, here's a fun one. Building block candy. Yeah. For those people out there who have always said, I like Legos, but I wish I could eat them. Congratulations. They made something just for you. Now, these building block candies are actually usable. You can stack them up on top of each other. So that's really useful. Uh, and then you can eat them. Uh, probably not advisable to put them all together into one giant candy block and then try to eat it. Maybe maybe disassemble it first. Uh, I imagine that would be a choking hazard. There are four flavors. So blueberry, banana, cherry, and lime. The best flavors. Uh, and they come in those two, four, six, and eight pin studs. All right. They also have options in here if you want to get the individual like party favor bags. So that's fun too. That was always the problem with Legos, is, um, you can't eat them. And, uh, many kids had tried. And, uh, many kids regretted it. But, uh, hey, make sure you don't get these confused with actual building blocks, too. Probably good to label them, or, uh, put them in separate spots. Don't mix and match, folks. I feel like that's going to cause some real problems. And possibly some trips to the emergency room. Oh, here's a good one, folks. Drum pants! Yeah! Have you ever wanted to learn how to play the drums? But uh, you don't have space in, you know, your garage or your apartment or your dorm room to have the, the full drum kit? Well, good news. They found a way to uh, implement wearable triggers into a, a pair of pants. So you can play the drums on the go. Congratulations, you can annoy the people in your house from the convenience of your couch. You just sit down and you start hitting your pants, and it makes a ton of drum sounds. Uh, it supports MIDI, by the way, and connects wirelessly or with USB. Isn't that fun? And uh, you, I think that it's also going to be really useful, too, if you fall asleep. 
uh, because uh, you you fall on the floor and the drum pants are going to activate and wake you right up and wake everybody else up in the house probably at that point uh, to let them know that uh, apparently you passed out drunk on the couch and they can ha- stage the appropriate intervention at that point. So drum pants, drumpants.com. Oh, oh, here's here's a good one. For the person on your gift list who is truly out of this world, Moonland. Yeah, you can buy land on the moon. This is a thing you can legitimately do. Prices start at $29.99 for like an acre of Moonland. And this is a real thing. Every deed is recorded and registered in the International Association of Human Planetary Exploration, or IAHOPE. It's gotta be good. You get a moon deed and a moon map, which shows the location of your property. So, hey, there's some good future planning. I think the problem that you're having right now with people buying land on the moon is that it's not exactly convenient for most of like the shops and services that you would normally want. I mean, the distance from the Earth is 238,900 miles, so bit of a commute. But, hey, you know what? Don't take my word for it. This has been purchased by some very important people. I am going to read right from officiallunarland.com. Okay. This is their pitch. Give the present that is cherished by more than 250 very outstanding big names in Hollywood, 30-plus past and current individuals from NASA, many previous U.S. presidents, and our current president, Donald Trump. Also, millions of people from every continent from around the world are recorded in our Lunar Land Registry. What could be a more noteworthy present than giving somebody a parcel of land on the moon? Numerous Fortune 500 organizations, for example, the Marriott, have bought a huge number of sections of land, of lunar land, for future colonization purposes. See you on the moon. I feel like they could have tightened that whole thing up a little bit, but needless to say, at least the Marriott is all in. There's going to be a hotel, so that's got to boost the economy. Uh, You know, I think that, you know, for, for future planning, why not? Go for it. It will be interesting once colonization actually starts on the moon to see if that deed holds up. But you know what? Seems like a lot of other people are all in, so... Hey, screw it. Go for it. Now, here's a good one. Uh, everybody loves selfies, right? What if you could put your selfie on toast? Yep, you can do that. They made a, a selfie toaster. Uh, I did not make this up. I could not have possibly made this up. I'm not that creative. There's a way that they can take your uh, your self-portrait and they can put it onto a little plate that goes into the toaster. And then when the, the toast comes out, the burnt part of the toast looks like the plate that was from your face. I mean, let's face it, folks. If you're going to eat toast, what's the one thing that could improve that? If you can see your face smiling back at you when you automatically put jam all over it and uh, completely cover up your own face. Uh, smother your face in, in jam or butter or cinnamon sugar or whatever you'd prefer to put on the toast. But for those brief moments in time, it's like your toast is a, a reflection of yourself and um, possibly judging you. If you want your toast to judge you, congratulations, they made a product for you. Enjoy. Oh, here's a great gift for the uh, baker in your life. Edible spray paint. All right. Uh, Yeah. Now, again, I feel like I need to put this disclaimer in here like I did with those Lego blocks is that make sure that the edible spray paint is in a different place from the normal spray paint. It would probably be smart to do that. Edible spray paint is available on, you guessed it, Amazon, and it comes in in a few Uh, colors. Uh, They have like a red and a green and a pearl. Perfect for this time of year. But if you want to get really classy, congratulations, Wilton has you covered with a shimmering gold. If you ever wanted to feel like King Midas, but with the munchies, congratulations. They have you covered. You can just take all of your regular food and you can make it gold for reasons. Yeah, go for it. Try it out. I I wouldn't want to eat it, because it looks like it's not actually food, but it is. 
Someone came up with this. Oh, and finally, for the person who has everything, uranium ore. I'm not kidding. Legitimately. Real uranium ore. Available on, you guessed it, Amazon. For $39.95 and free shipping. You can have uranium ore. This is, this is actual uranium, by the way. This is legitimately uranium. Naturally occurring radioactive material, or norm. This is literally the norm. Frequently bought together, by the way, with a professional Geiger counter. And the book, U.S. Armed Forces Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Survival Manual. So that's not disconcerting at all. I'm going to sleep soundly after knowing that those things are bought together. On Amazon, 1,296 ratings. Four out of five stars. This might be the last time I do a gift guide, because it's, um... Boy, it's freaking me out now. Hey, you know what? Let's take a short break and, uh, go check in with another one of our sponsors. This lovely holiday episode is brought to you by Eggnog. Is it a nog? Is it an egg? What is a nog anyway? No one knows for sure. But hey, you can throw booze in it, so it's all good. Eggnog. Alcohol is a meal now. You know, maybe I'll be sitting down with one of those nice eggnogs myself. You know, we have a lot of fun on this show, or so I've been told. And we couldn't do it without our lovely folks on Patreon. And this year, I wanted to try and figure out what I could give as gifts to the folks that we have on our Patreon. Uh, I was trying to work that out. Don't know if I can actually logistically do that, and I'm bad at gifts. Uh, but I, I thought maybe we could ruminate on that together. Uh, and also, give a special shout-out to all the lovely folks that have helped support us. Of course, we have to start with our shiny-level patrons, right? Uh, and uh, so, Bonnie, uh, I don't really know what I would uh, give to you. Maybe chocolate? Probably chocolate, right? That would work. Or, um, pens? I feel like anything pen or pencil-related is useful, but it really feels more like, you know... We made Christmas an office holiday, and, and I don't think that that necessarily translates very well. And I don't really know how exactly I would get it to you. I mean, I would have to travel at least, I don't know, 10 feet to hand it to you. Uh, well, you know, uh, I'll, I'll be thinking about it. Oh, socks! Socks are a good gift, right? Reminder, I have to go shopping really soon. I'm far behind this year. Uh, Dom. Dom. Uh, what I'd really like to give you is, uh, is peace in Hong Kong. Um, have a feeling that that's not really something I can deliver on myself. Uh, would really love to be, if I could, if I could just do that, I could just snap my fingers, just do that, that would be, um, great. I, um, don't quite have that power. Uh, if anybody does, though, please, be great to get on that. In terms of something I could deliver on, uh, poof, what could I do? Um, I, uh, I could stream another one of those ridiculous dating sims, like DDLC or Lovers of Ether. Uh, that, that I could do. I think you enjoyed those. As long as it puts a smile on your face, I will, I will go ahead and do it. Uh, it's always a train wreck, but it's a beautiful train wreck, so... And then we have our one-uppers, uh, Lei. Uh, I, uh, would love to be able to give you something that you could run, uh, in, in a and d Uh, I don't really know where I could find- Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, we do have something for you. If you go to, uh, the page for Delve 239, uh, where we talk to Alan Patrick from the D&D Adventures League, there's actually a link to a free adventure you could run. It's actually kind of a gift for everybody. But you can have it, too. I wish I had something more exclusive for you, but I don't. I'm sorry. But hey, it's it's something. It's the thought that counts. And that's what everyone keeps telling me when I try to give gifts to people. 
thank you so much for being so nice to us. Uh, Nick! Nick! Beer. I'm gonna go with beer. I have a feeling that that would be uh, good for you. I don't know how I would ever get it to you. Uh, so what I'm going to suggest is uh, next time I see you, uh, a beer is on me. That's a, that's a pretty good deal, right? You know, that it's a little bit delayed because I don't know when I'm actually going to get to... Uh, I, I don't know when I'm going to see you again. But imagine the theoretical drink on me. Uh, picture it in your head. I could try wrapping it. You, you don't want to see me try to wrap a bottle, though. That's going to be... That's not going to end well. And finally, to our all-access pass holders. Cannibal Halfling. Uh, I would, um... I guess give you a halfling you could eat. I don't, I don't actually know. Cannibal Halfling. Is that supposed to be a, a cannibal who eats halflings? Or a halfling who is a cannibal? I, I've, never, I've never quite understood. Maybe you can explain that to me. Um, it's one or the other. Uh, but whichever one it is, I would probably try to give you uh, some sort of uh, mail order uh, meal. Uh, there's got to be a food service for that. Uh, there's a mail order service for almost everything. If there is, I would try to get you that. Don't really know who I would get that through. Uh, pretty sure Omaha Steaks can't do it. Uh, so we'll work. We'll work it out. Uh, if you happen to know where I could find such a thing, uh, let me know, and I'll see what I can, uh, do. Uh, and, and finally, Steven. Uh, hey, I would make you a map. That's right, I would, I would make you a map. It is going to be incredibly poorly drawn and feature a lot of stick figures. That's about the best I can do. It's probably gonna be on graph paper, and it's not gonna make any sense. I don't think you would get much use out of it. Um, but uh, anyway, the theoretical gifts that I could give everyone are terrific. But I do want to give all of our patrons uh, one actual gift. A, a heartfelt thank you for helping support our program. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully you enjoy the, the patron-only content that I'm able to give you. Uh, and, uh, I know that from me and from Alex and from the entire team over here at Delve, which was, well, that's pretty much it. But, uh, from, from us and all of our compatriots here, uh, we, uh, we do really appreciate all the support that we've received from you. So, thank you for that, and, uh, and a happy holidays, uh, a Merry Christmas, and, uh, a Happy New Year to all of you out there. See? Isn't that nice? And, and sweet and warms the cockles of your heart. I don't actually know what the cockles are. Don't tell me. I want to be surprised. I'll look it up later. And be shocked and awed. Alright, uh, probably a good time to go to another commercial break. This Christmas special is brought to you by snow. It's fun to throw, but also very deadly to sleep in. You could say it's a frozen double-edged sword. Ooh, a frozen double-edged sword. That would be a really deadly weapon, wouldn't it? And you couldn't do forensic analysis on it or anything. Oh, sorry, I got off topic. Snow, it's what's for dinner. Oh, all right, I think that this is uh, around the time that uh, people usually do, you know, like the mail call, right? You do the letters? Like, let's uh, let's open up the Dell's mailbag. Let's try that. We don't have any? All right. Uh, no, no comments, no posts to really speak of. Uh, oh, hey, but you know what? This is a perfect time to go back to uh, one of my favorite little segments that I like to do. Tales from the Spam Folder. Yep, we're gonna, we're gonna try that right now and see what lovely comments I've been left from people who are probably robots. Let's, uh, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> here is, uh, something that was left for, uh, Delve 172, some assembly required. Uh, I like this site because so much useful information on here. 
And uh, then there's a emoticon smiley face. That's a that's actually a really nice thing to say. This might go well. We'll find out. Delve 157, buyer in the library. Uh, rattling nice design and great written content. Nothing at all else we require. And the same emoticon smiley face. Take that as a compliment. Great. Uh, what else we have? Oh, oh, oh no, a long one. The long ones always scare me. From uh, In the City of Mist, uh, 183. Uh, I and my friends appeared to be reviewing the excellent hints located on your webpage, and so unexpectedly got a horrible suspicion I had not expressed respect to the website owner for those techniques. All of the people came totally stimulated to read them and have in actuality been having fun with those things. Good. We appreciate you simply being simply kind and also for choosing certain awesome things most people are really desirous to know about. Our honest regret for not expressing appreciation too sooner. You're forgiven. It takes a while for people to find us. I think that was uh, a measure of regret. I'm, I'm not really sure. But if it was, you're forgiven. All is forgiven. It's the season for forgiveness. So, all right, moving on. This uh, is a comment from Matchmaker Extreme Edition back in Dell 186. I, I like this website. It's a masterpiece. Uh, peace is spelled like peace on earth. Uh, maybe that was for the season, you know, that uh, that would register, right? That uh, play on words or spell check wasn't working. Who knows? Delve 167 Articles of the Sky. Uh, I believe this website holds some rattling, superb information for everyone, and then the same emoticon smiley face. Why does everyone describe stuff as rattling? Is that a thing I'm not familiar with? Is that is that a term? I don't know. Here's a comment sent for Delve 165, uh, Rudy Rutenberg. Uh, go figure, that was when we had Rudy on the show. Uh, wonderful blog. I found it while surfing around on Yahoo News. Uh, do you have any tips on how to get listed on Yahoo News? I've been trying for a while, but I never seem to get there. Thanks. Well, and I've said this in the video series, it's not really a blog. It's, it's a podcast. Also, are we listed on Yahoo News? I'm pretty sure we're not. We would have a lot more traffic to the website if we were on Yahoo News. I don't know what newsworthy thing we would have done that would have gotten us to Yahoo News. If that actually happened, that's a Christmas miracle in and of itself. Ooh, a comment from uh, 121 Capers Noir. Uh, some truly interesting info, well-written and broadly user-pleasant. Yeah, again, it's not an article. It's... Now, you know what? We're just, we're just going to move on. This written in response to Delve 198, Crystal Heart. Okay, a little bit more recent. I needed to post you that very small word to help thank you very much yet again over the magnificent ideas you have documented above. It was really tremendously open-handed of you to grant without restraint what some people would have made available as an electronic book to help with making some dough on their own, chiefly since you might have tried it if you wanted. The good tips also worked as a good way to fully grasp that many people have a similar keenness, much like mine, to see a great deal more in regard to this condition. I believe there are millions of more pleasurable periods up front for individuals that discover your blog. Oh yeah, no, don't worry. We're not trying to make any dough on this. We, we, we have not made any dough on this non-existent electronic book. Uh, don't worry. It's not like we sold out. There's no one who will let us. <laughs> Here's a comment for Delve160, Familiars of Terra. Uh, keep up the good work. I read few content on this internet site and I conceive that your site is very interesting and has got lots of good information. Oh, no. Let's not go conceiving here. It's, it's really not that kind of website. Commenting on Delve 177, Gin and Capers Piccata, I'm really thankful to find this website on Bing. Just what I was looking for, Happy Face Emoticon, besides Save to Fave. I'm just surprised anyone found anything on Bing. That's uh, impressive in and of itself. Good deal. Commenting on Delve 171, Satine Phoenix, you can guess who we had on that episode. As soon as I noticed the site, I went on Reddit to share some of the love with them. Oh no. Oh, that can't end well. <laughs> um, okay. 
<laughs> Boy, now I'm really hoping that that's just a robot saying words. That can't end well. From Delve 112, Fluffernutter. You are my breathing in. I possess few blogs and rarely run out from to post. Sad face emoticon. Are you okay? Please be okay. <laughs> I don't know why it's a sad emoticon. It seems so positive right up until that point. Delve 169, Transit Talk with Fiddleback. Only want to remark that you have a very nice internet site. I love the layout. It really stands out. I'm glad you like blue. Delve 144, Alive with the Glory of Delve. You're so cool. I don't suppose I've learned anything like this before, so nice to search out anyone with some original ideas on this subject. Really thank you for starting this up. This website is something that's wanted on the net. Someone with a little bit originality. Helpful job for bringing one thing new to the web. I, I don't actually know if the internet wanted this. <laughs> Sometimes we wonder, but... Uh, Alright. We're gonna take it. <laughs> um, again for Delve 157 Fire in the Library I have read several good stuff here uh, Definitely worth bookmarking for revisiting I wonder how much effort you put to create such an excellent informative website Probably more time than I can actually justify <laughs> But you know what? Uh, worth it Just to read these comments Here's a good one from a very recent episode, Delve 238, Vampire the Masquerade with Jason Carl. In this great scheme of things, you actually receive a B-plus for hard work. Where actually you confused me personally was on the specifics. As it is said, details make or break the argument, and that could not be more true in this article. Having said that, permit me to say to you just what did do the job. The article, parts of it, is actually quite powerful, and this is possibly the reason why I am taking the effort in order to opine. I do not really make it a regular habit of doing that. Next, even though I can certainly notice the jumps in logic you make, I am definitely not confident of exactly how you appear to connect the points which make the final result. For right now, I will submit to your issue, but trust in the near future you connect your facts better. Oh, uh, okay. I'll try. It's not an article. I don't know if I was making any points. I don't know if you necessarily made a lot of points in that very long letter thank you for giving me a b plus appreciate it <laughs> i guess spam comments are amazing <laughs> and uh, let's just close out with this uh, another one for delve 169 transit talk with fiddleback uh, a few things i have seen in terms of laptop or computer memory is always that there are features such as sdram ddr and many others that must match up the requirements of the motherboard if the personal computer's motherboard is very current while there are no operating system issues upgrading the memory space literally requires under one hour it's on the list of easiest personal computer upgrade types of procedures one can consider thanks for expressing your ideas I mean, that was actually, like, a, a coherent point. It's just weird that it was made for an RPG. Maybe because Transit is about, like, computer AIs? I'm not really sure why we were sent that. But then again, I don't know why we were sent any of these. Uh, but you know what? I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I will always happily accept the number of spam comments that we get even when it is apparently in the thousands, like it was occasionally for one or two particular posts, uh, because it is just endlessly entertaining <laughs> to go through. And hey, this, they, these are just the comments for Delve. There are other ones for ATP, for, for Orbital, for the articles that we actually did do that, that maybe they, hopefully they say are articles. But uh, for, for all of us here at Delve, error code 404, internet, Spam not found. Hey, let's go to another commercial.
This seasonal spectacular is brought to you by Reindeer. Do you like deer but think they should be more festive? Congratulations! You can has reindeer. Some reindeer may fly, which is a bonus, but it is not common. If your reindeer displays a red nose of death, it is defective, so make sure to return it to your local reindeer dealership for repairs. Reindeer, better than fog deer. Uh, uh, well, I ate all those pizzas. That was probably not smart. Um, out of eggnog. And I already slipped on five of the Hot Wheels. And I hit my head on a paint can. You know, I was trying to protect my home. I thought that would work better. Uh, so, just sitting here alone in front of a fireplace screensaver now. And um, we already did the rockin' around the Christmas tree montage. That's check. Got that out of the way. I did that during the commercial break, don't worry, it, it definitely happened. And my neighbor stopped by and uh, smacked me in the head with a snow shovel. So that was a new experience. Yeah, I guess th I guess this was my Home Alone Christmas special. Uh, this is what happens when uh, they leave me alone to make something by myself. Um, you you kind of get what you would expect. You know, maybe it's just the eggnog talking, but uh, I wanted to actually say, uh, you know, an actual message from the heart here at the end. And it's it's one specifically targeted towards other creative people. Uh, you know, we have a lot of them on the show. We talk to a lot of them on a regular basis. And I know from my own personal experience having, you know, been making things for as long as I have, that sometimes it can feel like you're just throwing things out to the void and no one's really, you know, seeing it. Like, you, you, like basically I shouted into a vacuum. And it can feel very disheartening just making uh, stuff and maybe working on it for long periods of time, which I often find that I do, even if that really wasn't my intention at the start feeling like just that that kind of goes by the wayside and you know yesterday's news the second it comes out so to anybody who's in a similar boat and has felt that way in the past if you happen to be listening to this just a word of encouragement even if no one ever sees the thing that you made you should feel proud of the thing that you made i know especially this time of year it can be very difficult uh, with, you know, the holidays being right around the corner. It's a very stressful time for everyone, but especially if you're trying to make content for this time of year, it can feel really nerve-wracking, and, you know, you're gonna be down to the wire. It's gonna feel really intense. And then if it just kind of goes out with a whimper instead of a roar, it feels like all of that was for naught. That's the risk, you know, it's always going to be the risk when we make things that it's just not going to work. You know, I've been doing stuff in, in a digital space for, I guess, close to six years now. And, you know, we're coming up on 2020, which is supposed to be the year that you see clarity, right? Perfect vision. Uh, and there's also the start of a new decade. And so it's the kind of time where I start to feel like maybe I have to indeed do refocusing myself and figure out what I really want to do and take a step back. And I think that that's also very important for anyone who does something creatively. You know, I've talked to enough people on this show who have, have talked about being stretched you know, constantly having these ideas in their head and having to figure out how to not do all of them because it's going to drain the essence from their souls, essentially. I hear you. I know how you feel. Burnout is a real thing. Mental and emotional labor is a very real thing, and you have to be mindful of it. Because I'm going to make a resolution. Uh, as we look forward to a new year, a new decade. And it's not a resolution for myself, uh, because I'm never good at keeping resolutions, but it's a resolution for uh, other people that 
you are able to take a moment to step back from the thing that you are doing and look at it as an outsider. It's usually not something that we bother doing until we've completely exhausted ourselves. Come like January and February, you may find that I'm not doing all that much with, uh, with the projects that I normally do because I need to take that time myself and step back. That's just me sort of after this long period of time just asking some real questions about what I do and why I do it that I know I've needed to ask myself and really sit down with for a long time. Maybe because I decided that I was going to do three different Christmas specials this year. Uh, maybe because I constantly think that I need to do that. It can really start to feel draining. And so that's something I got to really, really deal with in <laughs> the new year. It's going to be very important for me. But the, the real message for the holidays that I want to give, uh, you know, I did mention our patrons specifically, and by the way, you patrons rock. You know that you do. But I want to extend thank yous even further than that. Since it does occasionally feel like you are shouting into the void, I want to thank all the people that have made me feel like I am not doing that. Uh, the people that actually engage with us, the people that actually listen and respond, the guests that we have very happily had on the show who have been so gracious as to come on the show and took time out of their day uh, to make time for us. We, we vastly appreciate what they've done. We appreciate the people that are coming on to our live shows and engaging with us directly. That's kind of one of the highlights of what we do. All the people where I will send out emails and ask questions, and even though they are very large in this space, the fact that they give responses, when I see that, it is heartwarming. But if you've left comments, if you have engaged with us in any way, shape, or form, it means the world. In fact, it is basically the only reason I still do this is for those moments where someone actually says, hey, that thing you did, thoughts on that. <laughs> like, not even necessarily I really loved that thing, but just I have thoughts on that and I wanted to share them with you. That's really the thing that keeps me personally motivated. And since it's Nathan's Home Alone Christmas special, I can only speak for myself here. I know that it can be very daunting for a lot of people to put yourself out there. And it's something that for a very long time I was shy to do. And since it is my Nathan's Home Alone Christmas special, I guess I'll talk a little bit about this, is that I was a very shy, reclusive kid. I was mostly a, a smile and nod person, you know, whereas people around me would have big personalities and I would just look and I would smile and I would nod and say, and, and just kind of go, mm-hmm, and try not to have any opinions or have any personality of my own. And as I get older, I just decided at a certain point that I just wanted to actually be something. And it's nerve-wracking to put yourself out there in any capacity, let alone an artistic one where you might have some kind of a personal emotional investment or a personal investment in who you are. But there was just a point where I decided that the risk was important to take. And to everybody that is out there who made me feel like there was at least some good reason I did that, I can't thank you enough. And I am really hoping that this holiday season, you are able to be the best version of yourself and to be accepted as the version of yourself you want to be. And may we all be so lucky as to have those people in our life. Uh, Merry Christmas and happy holidays and season greetings and uh, happy Hanukkah and uh, cool Yule. 
and winter solstice, those that are actually already passed when this goes out, but you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of holidays this time of year. And to everyone, may you have a wonderful new year. Uh, and we will see you in 2020, not only at the start of a new year, but the start of a new decade, which is crazy uh, to think about. Uh, and uh, also the year 2020, which uh, an optometrist will tell you is apparently perfect vision. I don't think it really applies to years, but I just think it's very interesting. You can have 2020 vision, you, you, maybe you can have 2020 years. I don't really know how that works. Boy, the eggnog really got to me. Anyway, folks, thank you for joining us. Me? Me and my imaginary unicorn. Thank you for listening, everybody. And to all Delvers everywhere, we wish you a good night.